everybody. My name is Nahomi Kalixti. Um, uh, I just graduated from um, General Urology in May, and I started to do a robotic and fertility fellowship with Dr. Paracato. I started in August. So I wanted to give you guys an idea of what we do at the Pure Clinic. Um, they are um, known for their management of testicular pain. They get international patients, but um, we also um, do a lot of infertility. Um, so, um, I'm going to talk about robotic vasectomy reversal. A lot of people have already talked about robotic vasectomy reversal, so if some information is going to be repeated, we're so sorry about that. Okay, thank you. I'm new in Prezi as well. <laughs> so as you know, we do up to 500,000 um, vasectomies in the in United States. A lot of, of it is because we have young patients, they, they get married and they think that's, that's it. They decided to do the vasectomy and then um, later on they get uh, remarried and then they decided to do a vasectomy reversal. So 6% of those get a reversal during their lifetime. Um, there are several options um, to assist with fertility following a vasectomy. However, we think that the, the vasectomy reversal is most cost effective. It um, also allows the couples to conceive more naturally rather than going the IVF route. Um, you've heard um, part of the history from Dr. Parvey's uh, presentation, but I'll tell you a little bit about it too. So the first uh, vase of vasectomies, um, it's where they connect the, the two vas together, was performed in 1919, and this was done microscopically. Um, they used a strand of silkworm to do the anastomosis. Then in 1975, they went um, with the microsurgical approach. And then in 2003, Dr. Shore and his colleagues, they did the first um, robotic-assisted um, VV um, using uh, basal segments in rats. Um, in that paper, they didn't really talk about their basal um, potency. <coughs> Um, microscopic uh, vasectomy reversal, as you know, is the gold standard. They do have a very good patency rate, it's between 80 to 90 percent, and the pregnancy rate is around 50 percent. However, um, one difference is that you need to have specific microsurgical skills. There's a very um, steep learning curve, um, especially for the more complex procedure, which is the connection, um, connection between the vas and the epididymis. So the robotic assisted VV um, helps us um, because it improves visualization, as you heard before, it eliminates the tremor. A study has shown that a lot of us, we have um, tremors at rest. Um, even if you don't see it, it's still there. So, um, and also you have a decrease in fatigue because you don't use a lot of your muscles um, you, um, and you don't need a skilled uh, microsurgical assistant. And they also noted that the training period and the learning curve is actually shorter for um, um, students or um, surgeons that um, are learning robotic assisted meetings. Although you don't have the tactile sensation or you don't have the haptic feedback, you should not really think it's a disadvantage because we continued practice and training, they noted that the surgeons, they become more aware of visual cues, so it becomes, um, um, you, you get used to it afterwards. There's been a lot of discussion in terms of the cost of using robots in procedures, especially in robotic and fertility. Um, and, um, the time requirements for the procedure. Um, studies have shown there's no statistical increase. It's only been like, it's only 10 minutes more in the um, operative time. And also the cost, it's not too bad. It's uh, about $315 more using the robot to do a vasectomy reversal. So I'll tell you um, about our result at the Pure Clinic. So we did a retrospective analysis. Um, it was nine years. Criteria for inclusions were if we had data for those patients. We will do vasectomy, uh, vasovasectomy, which is the connection between two vas. If you had sperm in the fluid, if you didn't have sperm, you'll have this anastomosis, which is a vas in the epididymis. And exclusion were patients that had no information. 
Um, we look at the variables, the age, pre-op, um, information, post-op. Our approach is a little different. We do three-layer anastomosis. So we use three or pro proline to bring two, the two vas together. Um, and um, the, in the Adventitia, then we use tendo nylon for the lumen, then we use ni ni um, nylon for the muscularis. Um, we had a total of about 294 cases. Let me see if I can make this thing work. So this is after we already docked the robot. It's showing you uh, anastomosis we're creating with a vas and an epididymis. This is the more complex version of the vasectomy reversal. Um, it's pretty precise. And uh, using the robot has really made a difference. Doing it. After, let's see. After three months, I was able to do a lot of those cases like by myself with the help of Dr. Caracano from the beginning till the end. So our result, uh, we've had our um, OR duration, the median was about 20 minutes. Um, the setup wasn't bad. Our, our nurses are used to this, so the setup takes us 30 minutes. Um, we've we also do vasectomy reversal for patients that had vas um, vasectomies and that are suffering from pain, so post vasectomy pain syndrome. We had 53 patients that had it, and 59% had um, improvement in um, pain. We also, of course, we do it for fertility, and 74% of our patients had uh, sperm postoperatively. We had 17 pregnancy in the um, more simple connection. This is the other side, which is the more complex one. It's still the same duration, same set of time. Um, pain is really not a reason. Um, usually, we had less patients that needed a VE for pain, and then uh, we had seven pregnancy in the more complex one. Um, so, although vasectomy reversal has been happening for um, some years now, it's still in its infancy, and we still need uh, comprehensive studies and randomized uh, studies. Um, to get better at it, and uh, that's it.